Hello audience! Welcome back to another episode of The Book Reviewer with your host Cindy. And I have another review to share. So if you'll remember, um, and if you're following me on YouTube, which you should be, um, you will have seen my video that I did last week. Um, I'll put it up in the cards above or wherever it is. Um, so you can check that video out. Um, in that video, I had said that there were some reviews that I were I was working on. Um, and that I thought that I would need a few more days to complete it. Well, I was kind of right. <laughs> um, so, um, I picked this book up um, since it looked good. This is actually some most of the time how I pick books um, based on the book cover um, and the summary either on the inside flap of the uh, um, hardcover or um, the back of the book what it summarizes. Here is this one. This one is In Silence by Erica Spindler. It is a fiction book and here's what it says on the back. Journalist Avery Shelbian is devastated when she receives word of her father's suicide. How could her father, a dedicated physician, have taken his own life? Returning to her hometown of Cypress Springs, Louisiana, Avery desperately searches for answers. Instead, she hears whispered rumors of strange happenings, of neighbors that go missing in the night. She discovers a box of 15-year-old newspaper articles in her father's house, all covering the same event. The brutal murder of a local woman. Why had her father kept them? Then past and present collide. A woman is found savagely murdered. An outsider passing through town vanishes, and Avery begins to wonder, could her father have been murdered? As each step closer to the truth exposes yet another layer of deceit, Avery must face the fact that in this peaceful southern town, a terrible evil resides, protected until now by the power of silence. So, um, like I read in the description, the little um, summary here, um, this does deal with su suicide, unfortunately. But, on the flip side, um, suicide, mental illness, especially recently, are becoming more and more recognized as real problems. Um, usually, um, you don't talk about that sort of thing, but our society, I think, is becoming a little bit more open and a little bit more um, tolerant, I guess. Um, so we talk about these things, and while it's a difficult thing for everybody involved, I've personally known two people who have committed suicide in my life. Um, it's a very, very difficult thing to understand, um, but we're not really here to talk about that particularly. Um, so this book starts off, this man called The Gavel, um, he is a man who is stalking this woman, and his woman's this woman's name is Elaine St. Clair. Um, he's stalking her. He's learning her routines, her things that she wants to do. Um, he threatens her with death um, because she knows too much. <coughs> Excuse me. She is. He demands her to leave Cypress Springs immediately. If she talks to anyone, she would die. And so it's kind of like, you know, just go quietly, don't tell anyone type thing if you want to live. Um, now this, this girl, Avery, she's a journalist. Um, she found out her dad died in a fire. Now, that's particularly devastating because 
he was a doctor and he knew <laughs> probably more than he should about you know drugs and and the effects of you know different injuries to the body and things like that um hunt matt is avery's boyfriend of sorts and hunter is avery's older brother now matt has a twin named hunter um so she's like their little sister so um so after her dad died a few minutes after her, not a few minutes a few months after her dad died um she is in her childhood home and she notices some clippings of a woman she never knew her name she she didn't know who she was and she is wondering why <coughs> excuse me her father had kept them all these years because according to the summary they're 15 years old why was he keeping these now there have been a rash of mysterious things going on a disappearance and a couple suicides and we're talking in a town of 900 people so it's a little bigger than a um, like a town would be like a, you know rural America kind of thing um, so this is very very strange um, not it's not normal for this little town to have two suicides a year or whatever it is um, so Avery searches for answers she finds them um, but it's a murder mystery so um, <laughs> I'm not going to give away the ending um, but it does have a Kindle edition um, I'll put a link down in the description below where you can find it on Amazon um, your local library would have it um, I really really like this book um, this is significant because the closest thing that I have read um, in terms of a mystery would be Encyclopedia Brown if you guys are familiar with him he is this like the eight-year-old boy detective that can solve mysteries very very well um, so this was a new <clears throat> a new experience for me um, there were some parts I didn't care for um, but overall it was very very good and um, as some of you know um, I am a writer by trade and this was written very very well um, it's just like the Harry Potter books I'm from a writer's perspective there there must have been some crazy crazy detailing in those um, I think I'll try and um, review them too um, but this is Erica Spindler in silence um, I'll put a link down in the description below um, give me a shout out in the comments below if you read this book if you liked it if you hated it I don't care I want to know um, what are your thoughts about murder mysteries do you like them do you hate them or is it something maybe you haven't read before which actually was my case um, so this was a pretty good book um, I don't know yet if I'm gonna read anything else by Erica Spindler but I may I'll see um, I have a couple other reviews in the works so hopefully they will be up soon and I can finish reading them um, thanks for watching you guys thanks for subscribing keep reading don't stop believing and we will see you again tomorrow because you'll see this on Tuesday bye guys